Hi everyone, it's Nick from Astro Exploring. Welcome to another video. In tonight's video, I'm going to be showing you how I image with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, and it's also going to be the first session that I'll have used my um, Astro Modified DSLR, so that's uh, going to be pretty interesting. The target that I'm going to shoot is the Orion Nebula. Um, I'm going to shoot that one because I shot that one a few weeks ago with uh, my DSLR before it was modified, so I just want to. Oh, Sorry, it's Hugo marching past. Um, so I want to um, try and shoot that again uh, with the modified DSLR just to see um, what the difference is and, and how that looks for all the uh, hydrogen alpha emission that I'll be getting out of it. It's, um, it's a beautifully clear night at the minute, the sun's just setting now, um, but it is um, quite windy out here at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so. We'll see how we get on. Hopefully it doesn't vibrate the, uh, the mount too much. Ignore the um, construction um, vehicles out the back. They're building houses out the back of us, unfortunately. Um, and there's going to be a house where this tree is. That's going to be the side of somebody's house. So that's going to block quite a bit of sky for me, unfortunately, and that is due south as well. My garden faces southwest, so that is a real pain, but we'll see how we get on uh, when it's built. Um, there's Venus in the sky now, and it's a really, really nice sunset too. Um, so the setup that I've got at the minute, so I've um, I've already balanced, I've already polar aligned, and I've um, got the mount on the celestial tracking mode. Um, so this is using my, hey Hugo, this is using my Manfrotto Traveller tripod. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. I've been using this tripod for about two years now. Um, it's been perfectly fine for me. It's got a payload capacity of eight kilograms. Um, I said in my previous video that there are better tripods out there, but I didn't want to spend the earth and this has worked perfectly fine for me. Um, up the top here, we've got the um, Skywatcher EvoStar 72ED DS Pro, and that's an uh, apochromatic doublet refractor telescope with a uh, focal length of 422, uh, sorry, 420 mil. Um, so it's a really nice wide field of view. So I'm going to try and see um, how much of the Orion constellation that I can capture at the same time as the Orion Nebula, just to try and catch as much as possible for a nice wide field shot. Um, and then I've got my 650D, which has just been astro modified by um, Juan over at um, cheapastrophotography.com. Um, he turned that around in about a week. It's absolutely amazing service. Um, and that is just an AstroZap dew heater strap. And I am powering that. Hugo is going absolutely mad. I am powering that um, using my um, car jump starter battery. So apologies that there's been a break in videos, guys. Um, I've had, I, I mean, I work full time. I'm studying for a degree part time. Uh, and we've also had some building work starting on the house recently as well. So it's been absolute chaos for me recently. Um, and then combined with the fact that we've had Storm Kira, uh, not the weekend just gone, but the weekend um, before that. And then the following weekend we had Storm Dennis um, and there's just been horrendous amounts of, of wind and rain. And I just want to say a huge thank you. At the time of filming this video, I've got I've now got 141 subscribers. Um, I haven't even been doing this channel for, for two months yet. Um, so I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of people that have already hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't, um, please do subscribe and make sure that you hit the bell notification so that you never miss another upload. I've um, positioned the telescope to point towards the Orion Nebula. I've currently got it set on a 30 second exposure at ISO 800, uh, just to just as a quick test to see how that's going. So we will um, see how that looks. Uh, I've already done a, a rough focus, just guessed on where um, the spacing was last time. Um, so there should be there or thereabouts and I can fiddle about with that once this exposure has finished. So this is my first um, time using the DSLR modifier so I'm really excited to see how this test shot turns out. I haven't seen it myself yet. 
and oh wow you see how red that is that is incredible let's get that back up wow that is amazing i mean it's not quite framed up very well and as you can see because of the wind it's not really, <laughs> it's not really tracking very well either but um, if i try and frame that up a bit better i am gonna do my best Okay, I'm just now doing a one minute exposure to see how that looks. Um, the wind still hasn't quite died down, so I don't know how this is gonna look. Um, I'm using my remote shutter release cable um, to do that in a minute, just for, just for one test shot. So we'll see how that's turned out now. Okay, that looked, that looked pretty good. Okay, that looks really good. I'm really pleased with that. I can't believe the difference a modified DSLR makes. I know it's obvious to say it to people that have modified DSLRs, but um, the fact that a one minute exposure has brought out more red light than um, any imaging that I've done sort of well over an hour, um, I just find that incredible. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up for a couple of hours of imaging now. Okay, so I've... Um set my imaging going now i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do a one minute exposure just because of the wind um a 30 second exposure didn't look brilliant um, because the mountain was wobbling a little bit um no fault of the equipment it's just because of how windy it is but this is the first clear night i've had in a long time and the weather that we've had has been so atrocious i am absolutely not wasting a clear night especially when it's like a 10 percent moon tonight as well um so i've set it up for one minute exposures on the orion nebula um, i'm doing 150 of them um, and i'll see where that gets me um, i don't know if i'll get that many or not but we'll see how it goes but i'm just really pleased to be back in the garden doing astrophotography again it's been way too long um, it must have been three weeks since i've been able to to get out and do this and i've been um, doing other video videos for you guys but um, being out in the garden doing astrophotography is the reason that we're all doing this hobby so um, I'm really pleased that I'm able to get out here and finally test my uh, modified camera which I've had back for about two weeks now and this is the first chance that I've had to be able to use it so I am really really pleased and uh, now I'm going to go back inside for a couple of hours uh, warm up because I am freezing uh, and see if the wife wants to make me a cup of tea right welcome to my laptop um, for anybody wondering, I had to make my own cup of tea. That's not very nice, is it? I just thought I would show you guys um, the difference between um, how this image looks from being modified to not modified. So this is a, a massively cropped image that I took of the Orion Nebula at the beginning of January. And you can see it's really lacking any sort of red uh, detail. Uh, there. So I have just stacked um, the image in Deep Sky Stacker and I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. Okay, so I mean before I've even done anything to the image you can already see the difference in the amount of red detail that there is in that um, so I actually ended up with uh, 71 light frames um, and then by the time it had stacked I ended up with about an hour's worth of data. So um, this is basically 60 one minute subs um, with flats and bias frames. I, I haven't used any dark frames on this since I watched Peter Zelinka's video about why shooting dark frames on a DSLR is pointless. Um, and <laughs> I can't really thank him enough for that because I absolutely hate shooting darks. I find that the worst part of astrophotography because they take forever but you're not actually capturing um, any light whatsoever. So I know I said in my last video um, or maybe the video before that I wouldn't do a Photoshop tutorial for you guys um, because I'm not particularly au fait with it and um, I'm kind of going against that a little bit here. Um, this is by no means a Photoshop tutorial. I just wanted to show you a quick stretch of the image 
just so that you guys can see the difference. Um, there'll be people watching this that are Photoshop experts that are um, cringing at the sight of what I'm doing because I'm doing all of this in one layer, um, but that's okay. They can they can comment below with their frustration. That's fine. I welcome all comments. Um, I'm just going to do this per channel um, because I find that it works a lot better. Uh, all I'm doing here is just clipping the side of the uh, image just to pull it in. I'm not actually losing any data by doing this. I'll just pull that back ever so slightly. And now I will go for... Wow. That. <laughs> I'm absolutely blown away by that. Um, I mean, you can see how quick that was to do as well. And if I just pull these in a little bit more, I'll probably pull that into that there. Um, you probably don't have to hit OK every time you do this, by the way. Like I say, I'm not a Photoshop expert, so don't take anything that I'm doing here as an indicator of what you should definitely do, because I've got no idea. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, so, what what did that take? Two minutes? A quick crop just to get rid of the vignetting around the edges and uh, sorting out the levels per channel and then a really quick stretch. And you can see the Running Man Nebula is popping out there as well, but you can see, look at the amount of red detail that is in that compared to this image. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, I'm over the moon. I mean, it costs 75 quid plus posting um, to get the camera modified, and it, it was turned around by one in about a week, and that is phenomenal. I'm really pleased with that. It just opens up so many more targets, like um, the Rosette Nebula is well placed at the minute. That's something I've wanted to shoot for a long time, but with a stock camera, it's pretty hard because it's basically all hydrogen alpha. Um, so I'm going to carry on and playing around with this image and then I will post the final image at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.